Today we're in Battambong, northwestern Cambodia. And today is all about going on a massive food adventure. We're taking you into the heart of the Cambodian countryside to share with you the region's incredible local food producers. Families open up their homes so we can go behind the scenes of some of the country's best food. We visit a dessert maker using open fire to create traditional sweets and a family churning out handmade rice paper using a unique contraption. We eat sticky rice roasted in bamboo by the roadside, enter a world dedicated to prahok, Cambodia's most iconic ingredient, and explore a fishing village where we devour our favourite Khmer street food. In this Cambodia series, we'll take you into the heart of the nation's food culture, from traditional Khmer recipes to street food in Cambodia's local markets. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. <laughs> One of the reasons we were so excited about coming to Battambong in Cambodia is because it's very famous for having a lot of uh, cottage industries in the villages surrounding Battambong city. So cottage industries are businesses which operate out of the home and many of these cottage industries in Battambong revolve around food. So today we're going to be exploring the province of Battambong and we're hoping to visit some markets, some of these cottage industries, so hopefully a rice paper maker, maybe a fermented noodle maker and then to see what else we find on this exciting adventure. We've got a tuk-tuk driver, Mr. Ol, who's waiting for us on the opposite side of this bridge. So let's go and jump into the tuk-tuk and get moving. Whoops. <laughs> the suspension bridge we're crossing, it's great. You have to share it with the scooters. Um, but from here, we can see the first pit of the cottage industry and that's fishing in this river. So all these poles down here are what they're using to make the, the fish nets. Oh, incoming scooter, you gotta lean right up against the bridge to let the scooter zip on by. We've arrived at our first stop for the day. So this day is going to be quite different to our normal food tours. We're definitely going to be eating food, but we're going to be seeing what we find as we go along. And the first stop is a really interesting village. This is a Muslim fishing village. So we're right on the river. And so today, <laughs> oh, this kid's got a fish actually. We're right on the river and you can see all of their, their fishing gear down here. So at the moment, it's the dry season. In the rainy season, the water would come right up to where it's actually scoured out this bank and it's getting incredibly close to these people's houses, which is definitely an issue for the, for the future. But we're gonna explore the village, see what we can find. Um, so this day is going to be all like that. We're just going to be going around checking out these um, cottage industries of food. So this is a video all about the food culture here in Cambodia and we'll be eating what we find along the way. But let's check out this village first. We've explored the village and there's not actually any fish here at the moment today but we are going to some other fishing places later where we'll see the, what they, how they prepare the fish, so drying it etc. But it is very intriguing seeing all the methods of fishing in the river here. And so you can see a bunch of poles and netting, so they set up these nets and we hear that they sometimes leave them for a few months to really fill up with um, all the river fish and then they collect them and then obviously sell them on. So the, the predominant income for this village is from the fish that come out of the river and it's really neat seeing all the industry they've got set up to catch those fish. We may not have found any fish in this fishing village, but what we've found is arguably a bit better. It is these amazing Khmer puddings. They're called Nong Krok. They are my favorite snack to eat here in Cambodia. They're made up, um, so today, hello, how are you? Nick Sox <laughs> Um, These puddings, well, they're made out of a, a uh, rice flour and coconut milk mixture. So they're like a, a rice flour cake, I suppose. And you see you've got this griddle pan here. She's cooking it over charcoal. So you can see the little, um, the little cakes bubbling away. They're so chingan. Nom krok. Nom krok. Chingan nom krok. Chingan. <laughs> so she's saying they're delicious, they're delicious, it's chingan. So you see that they're, um, they're quite gooey inside, so she lets them sit in the little griddle pan for a bit and crisp up on the outside, and the, the 
gooey centre remains and they get whisked out before it sets too much. We've got to try these, they look great. We've found some fish actually while we're waiting for the nuncrook to cook. Right behind the stand we noticed some fish while we were filming. So there's um, some lovely ladies here who um, are preparing the little river fish. Um, and they're putting them onto sticks. So they're preparing the fish that have been caught, I imagine, this morning, putting them onto sticks for, for this setup here. So you can see all the fish lined up. <laughs> so said hi, so said hi. Um, the, the locals are just so lovely here in Cambodia, so friendly, always a big smile. Um, you can see the fish here, it gets put onto these sticks, they put it out to dry, and then the next phase, they take this firewood, They've got a little um, rack set up here, so they smoke the fish, so it it's not happening right now, but it will be smoked on these racks over this fire. So it's a really neat setup to watch, and I think it's a great illustration that it's, it's hard for some people. I mean, these are not the, the richest people in the world, and you can see that this village is right on the edge of the river, it's dirt roads, it's dusty, it's a hard life here, and they're so welcoming to us to let us in to see this, this, the way this fish is prepared and it's very special to be able to see things like this and to have access and to be able to show you guys a totally different side of the world that sometimes we, we just don't get to see. This is a very interesting village to explore and I feel quite privileged to be here and for them to be opening their doors to us and letting us in to, to check out how they live on a day-to-day on a -day basis. Our Numkrok are ready. So I feel like in my excitement, um, about the Nom Krok, I didn't really explain what they're made up of. So rice flour, coconut milk and spring onions. So a pretty simple batter, you can see here that they're still ooh, crispy on the outside and super gooey on the inside. They're very hot, my fingers are burning, but I'll, I'll, I'll attempt a little bite. Mmm, oh, so <laughs> oh, very hot, but oh, it's so good. So really crispy shell on the outside, you bite in, and the batter just oozes into your mouth. It's quite sweet, um, a little bit savoury. <laughs> the kids here in this village are so friendly. They've been chatting, they've been teaching me Kamaya, it's so much fun. And these Nungrok are really delicious. Hi, do you want to it's time to leave the fishing village and head over to our next spot. We're um, exploring the, the Batambang uh, countryside in a tuk-tuk. And this is our driver, Mr. O. Okan, Mr. O, taking us around. Okay. <laughs> Travelling in a tuk-tuk is fantastic because it's obviously open air. So you get to take in the surrounding countryside very easily. Thomas and I are not on a tour. Uh, we have just said to Mr. Ol that we we're interested in particular cottage industries and he's just driving us to each of these stops. And so we're on our own and it's really neat. It's, it's turning out to be a fantastic day. Now, Batambong is famous for producing Cambodia's best produce. It's a very uh, agriculturally rich region. And as we've been driving through the countryside, we've been seeing tons of uh, uh, fruit treats. So bananas, pomelos, papaya. It's fantastic to see it all. We've arrived at what is essentially a traditional dessert factory and you can see behind me everyone working on different desserts. So over here the ladies are making a Thai style dessert. So they've got uh, sticky rice and this here you can see all the wasps are swarming all over the sweets because they're attracted by um, the sweetness. And so these here are mung bean, some egg yolk thread. Uh, the ladies are really kind and gave me a taste before and they were beautiful. What they're doing is working super hard because they're preparing wedding favours. There's a uh, village wedding happening on uh, later this week. And over here, they've got these big woks, which are, oh, awkward. <laughs> All right, I've been put to work. So this is coconut milk, and it's been cooked slowly down with sugar. So um, really thickened up. It's going to become quite thick, almost like a paste. And it's cooking over charcoal. The smell is absolutely incredible. Over the over here, uh, there are a couple of pans of dessert going. Oh, <laughs> I've got, I'm really settling in. Oh, good. <laughs> I've got my chair. This lady's pulled up a chair for me. I think I'm going to be uh, here for the next uh, wee while. Just making sure that this coconut milk mixture <laughs> cooks right up. I've been relieved of duties. Um, 
I said that it was cooking over charcoal, but it's actually cooking over wood fire. And over here, they've got, I believe, some lotus seeds bubbling away furiously. This place is fantastic. The, the wooden structure that it's housed in is completely blackened with um, all of the smoke that's obviously come up from all of the cooking. Um, and I can see actually some other desserts being made back here. So follow me. I spotted another dessert here. I believe it's made out of uh, sticky rice and coconut. It's in a pan cooked basically like a slab of cake and actually the lady here is preparing the fresh coconut so she's just getting all of that uh, flesh inside the coconut out of it so it's sort of like a grinder that's grinding all the flesh out and then whoa i've never seen a setup like this this is where the dessert's cooking so this is a makeshift oven essentially they've got a big piece of iron corrugated iron oh! The heat going off of this thing is insane. Got a big piece of corrugated iron on which they're burning coconut husks. And they're cooking the pans of cake, the sticky rice and coconut cake underneath. I can see it bubbling right up, whoa. And I, I think that the what will happen is that the, the aroma from that coconut husk will permeate right inside that cake and it'll be absolutely phenomenal tasting. Wow. Every step of the, the process is done on site. So the, the rice milk, which is being made, is churned and broken down through this grinder. So she puts ladlefuls of that rice, which is mixed in with water, the sticky rice mixed in with water, through this mill, and then it creates a mi rice milk, which is used then to create that dessert. <laughs> this is one of those very special environments to be part of because there's so much going on here and so many different desserts and what is a pretty huge area of production actually there's things going on in all corners of this it's really neat and they've been kind enough to sell us quite a lot of desserts actually a very big bag of desserts so I've got a little sample of some of the things they make here so we've got four different things we've got two little balls made with mung bean uh, we've got a sticky rice dessert here with some sesame seeds on top and this is some egg yolk thread so this sticky rice is screaming my name let's grab that out oh oh so good mm. not too sweet actually perfect i love it um, sometimes these desserts in asia can be sickly sweet that's not at all some have some of this egg yolk Red. Mmm. Oh. So there's a sugar syrup on that. Really good to be able to try some of these desserts that they're preparing here. And like I said, just an incredible in environment. And just like the village this morning, an absolute privilege to be part of all this and see it happening. I mean, the egg yolks are being cracked here for what I've just eaten, the jackfruit being prepared. Uh, the sticky rice pudding that I've just eaten getting cut up here, all that um, cooking with the coconut out the back, the milk being made, the lotus seeds, everything is absolutely intriguing and it's been a joy to film and see, so unreal. Okun everybody, thank you, Okun, Okun, this is oh delicious, Okun, wow that's good, so we've got to get back on the tuk-tuk now and we're heading off to our next stop. just pulled into this really neat roadside stall. So this is the, the dish that we're gonna have here. It's called Krolan. It's a sticky rice snack cooked in bamboo. But it's very interesting how this is cooked. So before we eat it, I wanna show you their little setup. So we're right on the side of the road and this is where the bamboo is being cooked. So they've let me right in to give you a really good look at this. So here are the, the bamboo um, canisters that they cook the sticky rice in and they have different fillings in there in there I think these ones are sticky rice and black bean so they've got this, this big long sort of trough here which is full of um, well it's now burnt down so I can get really close so I'd say this morning this would have been raging but it's now cooled right down because these take about two hours to cook so they put the sticky rice inside the bamboo 
and just cook it over this, sort of line them up and cook it over this big trough of fire. And what's really neat, look at this, I can, it's cooled down enough that I can touch it. So look at that. They plug it with a, I'll take it out for you, look at that. They plug it with a banana leaf, so a little bundle of banana leaf, and that keeps all the moisture in there. So that sticky rice cooks up and obviously doesn't dry out um, and burn. But what I really like as well, so that's all black obviously, because it's sitting on the fire. So over here, He's preparing them for sale because you don't want to be snacking on something that's going to make your hands all disgusting. So we've got this big pile which he's just chopping off with a sort of cleaver type instrument. Just skimming off all that burnt stuff into this pile so they're nice and, and clean for eating. And what's really good is all this bamboo gets used, so I guess tomorrow they'll use all this to put back in the trough for tomorrow's batch. So it's, it's just like we saw actually just now at the dessert place where the, the coconuts, they were using the coconut, using the flesh to make the milk, and then using the husks to, to cook the dessert. So same deal here, using all of the products right through the process. So neat to be in here and part of it. Let's get some of this sticky rice to, to eat. <laughs> All right, so this is the Kroalan. Oh, so, oh, like which end do you go from? This end, because this is where all the goodies are. So you can see inside the sticky rice, it's been mixed with coconut milk, and then there are black beans in there. So I think what we do is we just give this bamboo a bit of a crack, and then we sort of strip it away. Oh, yeah, look at that. So, oh, stuck to my t shirt. Strip it away like that, and then we reveal the delicious food inside. All right, let's just get a big taste of this. So look, the sticky rice um, cooked with that coconut milk, so it's gonna be quite sweet, and then a big uh, dollop of black beans in there. Mmm. Mmm. What I love about it is that it's not overly sweet. So you can very, really taste that coconut milk. It's quite strong, but it's not overpowering. Um, the sticky rice is very gooey and gluggy and sticky, obviously. And then you've got those earthy black beans. This is neat, and I love how you can just hold on to your bamboo vessel, keep stripping it off as you keep snacking. It's gonna be perfect for the tuk-tuk ride. One of the stops that we said we had to make to our driver, Mr. O, was the Prahok Market. Now, Prahok is an iconic Khmer food. It's the one ingredient that really sets it apart from the food in Thailand and say in Vietnam, and it is a salted fermented fish paste. Now, this, this market is smelly, but I don't think it's smelly in a bad way. It smells so pungent and intense because Essentially, this whole place is stocked full of uh, big wooden and plastic barrels full of this brahok or the fermented fish paste. So you can see here, look at this giant tub. It is just full of fish. So essentially, brahok is just made up of uh, raw fish, salt and water and they stick it in these big giant barrels and they let it ferment for two weeks and up to a month. And so it becomes really pungent. You get all sorts of different levels of prahok. So the, the ones which have the bones in them, the fish which still has the bones is a little bit cheaper than say the, the fish filleted, uh, the fish which has been filleted and then used for the prahok, so boneless prahok. But you can see here, this is sort of um, still in the early stages of the fermentation. The fillets of fish are still pretty whole. And you can, like, the smell is so intense. Driving into the market, you could smell it a ways off. And this here is just a big pile of the prahok. They've actually removed it from the barrel so that they can add more salt. So we can get right up close. Man, this is just fascinating. What they use the prahok for as well um, is uh, adding to soups, uh, some law, and um, giving it a big, intense, punchy uh, depth of flavour. But they also just uh, grill it and wrap it up in lettuce leaves. Um, you can see here, look at that. Wow. The smell is, is not fishy. It's just um, earthy, salty, 
and you can smell the fish but it's not overpowering it's not disgusting it's just a like a fragrance almost an intense fragrance this is really neat being able to walk in amongst all the barrels here so they do fish a few different ways here as well. So inside the market is all the fermenting fish, but they also do some other smoked fish and dried fish and things. And look at this, there's a fish delivery just coming. So on the roof of this ute, they've had all the fish piled high. It was, it was about this high up the roof just before, weighing it as they bring it in, stacking it in for these guys. But if you come over here, you can see what they're doing with the fish. Akun, over here, they're prepping all the fish for, um, for drying and smoking, which is really neat. So these ladies are cutting it all up and filleting it, gutting it, getting it prepped. Oh, so interesting to see. And over here is the end result of all that process. So I'll take you over and show you what they've got on the racks over here. And over here is where that fish is being dried. So you can see they've got it on these racks um, with little gaps in them so the air can get right through and get around it. But they're using this incredibly hot sun that you get in this part of the world to dry the fish. So it's sitting there on the racks. You can see that beautiful color that the fish is turning as it dries. And this is used in multiple different ways. They, um, they fry it and eat it with rice, you, um, grill it, all sorts of different ways it can be cooked. But sitting here in this really hot sun, drying out, Again, a beautiful smell. So this, this market and the fish paste particularly, you hear a lot of people say is disgusting and the smell is horrible, but it's really not. It's a, it's a pungent smell like Sheena said, but it's a beautiful smell. If you're really into food and you love things like um, strong blue cheeses, this place is brilliant. It's a lovely smell. And I liked walking through the market because you were getting different smells from the different types of fish paste. It's not just sort of one big overriding smell. Some were a little bit sweeter, some were tangier. A very interesting market. Again, like everywhere we've gone today, so interesting to see it all firsthand, how this prep is being done for the dishes you have here in Cambodia. It's amazing seeing the process from start to finish. Uh, unloading the fish, gutting the fish, and then laying the fish out to dry. So dried fish is a really prominent part of the Khmer diet. One, because it's cultural, they love to eat it. And two, um, a lot of Cambodians are still without refrigeration, so it's a way to preserve the fish. What I've been blown away so far today is that the Khmer people are just so friendly, hospitable, people have been so welcoming. Um, they've stopped to chat with us, let us ask questions, gotten us involved. They're just really kind-hearted people. We've arrived at this family's um, business and they're making rice paper. You can see all the rice paper drying here on the racks. And rice paper is used for uh, wrapping spring rolls in. So this is the rice paper drying, but over here, you can see her making the rice paper. It's a neat setup. So she's got a big pot of rice batter, I suppose, in front of her. And then she's pouring um, a bowl full of the batter onto this uh, piece of fabric, which is just steaming away. And she uses the bowl to, to thin it out. So it's a, a circle, pops the lid over the top, and then it steams for a couple of seconds before she whips it off. So she uses a spatula to whip that rice paper off of that cloth and it's so super thin. I don't know how it doesn't break. And they've got this makeshift turnstile um, out of bamboo. So she puts it on the bamboo and this bloke here whips it off onto the drying rack. And like Thomas said um, before, when we were at the sticky rice place, everything is used so to create fuel for the fire they've got the rice husks uh, going in it's a really beautiful smell again and then these here are the dried rice paper so it only takes about 30 minutes to dry very quick and they're um very crispy so can you hear that almost a little bit plasticky wow The family who make the rice paper have a restaurant across the road where they serve fresh and deep fried spring rolls or they're called nam in Khmer. And uh, what she does is she, she grabs the rice paper and she rehydrates it in this bowl of water here. So remember I said before that it was quite a plasticky texture. She rehydrates it to soften it up so that she can use it to make the spring rolls. And what she does is she pops in um, some lettuce, some cucumber, some rice noodles, some bean sprouts, pork um, and also some herbs, I think it's Thai basil, 
and then rolls it up into a tight little parcel. And there's uh, fresh and also deep fried ones available. So I think we're going to sample both. wait to dive into these spring rolls so we've got both the fresh and also the fried and I've got my dipping sauce in I thought I might just add some of this chili into it the dipping sauce is made up of fish sauce um, some sugar peanuts I think some rice vinegar let's get into these fresh ones so god how amazing is this so right across the road they're making the rice paper fresh and then two seconds later you're getting to eat it and in this form it's going to be the perfect way to sample it so i'm just going to dip that right in there so a ton of fresh vegetables there's a little bit of pork in there and also some rice noodles beautiful and fresh and that rice paper is lovely it's a little bit sticky a great chew to it that's fantastic let's try these fr uh, fried ones the fried ones have a different filling so they've got uh, bean sprouts and also a pork mixture and also I think cellophane noodles give that a bit of a dunk mmm all right mmm Mmm, mmm, fantastic. The rice paper is crisped right up. It's very light. And then the filling is wonderful. Really crisp uh, bean sprouts and also the, the noodles add to, a, add to the texture. Mmm. I love the sweet and sourness of the dipping sauce. I think it's just so special to be able to, to eat the food that you've seen being prepared and made pretty much five minutes later. This is just unreal. We're back in the Tuk Tuk and heading back into the city of Burrumbong after what has been an incredible day looking at all these cottage industries that you can find all around the city. So everything we've seen has been within about 15 or 20 kilometers of the city center. So very easy access and an incredibly special day. We hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the prep and just some of life out here in countryside Cambodia. We've loved filming it and we hope you've enjoyed seeing it. Chuck a comment down below if you've enjoyed it and give us a thumbs up.